Howdy and welcome to episode 15 of T-Shirts and Shawls. I'm Karen and today is Thursday, December 1st, 2016. We are in the final month of the year. Um, so um, since I've talked to you last time, Thanksgiving has happened here in the US and we had um, quite a bit to do for that. Uh, so I'm kind of feeling like I've, I've been off schedule for a while. Uh, and it's nice to get back into uh, my routine, which really today is the first day that I'm fully back into my routine. So um, last week on Tuesday, our in-laws who live in Houston came up to visit and um, they were here just Tuesday night and then they drove up north um, about 45 minutes away to where my brother-in-law lives and stayed with them um, for, uh, for the Thanksgiving um, a few days. And so on Thursday for Thanksgiving, um, we went up to my brother-in-law's house and had all the yummy food and everything. Um, and then on Saturday, so we were just up there for the day. Um, and then on Saturday, we had some friends who um, fr were visiting from out of town. They were actually in Houston visiting their family and driving back home to where they are out of state and, um, and were passing through Dallas. And so they stayed overnight on Saturday. And actually, um, Gina watches the podcast. So hi, Gina. Um, so um, they got to stay overnight. And it, I think it had been since about last time, last year, either Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, since we've seen them. And they have a little girl um, that's um, a little bit younger than Luke. And so Luke got to play with, um, with their little girl and had lots of fun. Um, and then no sooner did they leave Sunday morning than about half an hour later, my in-laws came back to our house and they were actually here until yesterday morning. So like I said, um, it was great to, you know, to get to, to see people, um, but um, definitely it's kind of thrown, thrown me a, a bit off schedule. So happy to be back on, um, on my regular routine, which means a podcast day. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Today's shirt is a shirt that is a Firefly inspired shirt. So this is the Serenity in the whole kind of starry night um, kind of thing, which by the way, I've been seeing a lot of this, um, some type of fandom within Starry Night. Um, a lot of these shirts, and I will admit that I have a couple, <laughs> um, including this one. Um, so that seems to be something that is pretty popular. This is actually a shirt that I just got recently. Um, today may even be the first time I've worn this shirt. Um, really, really recent shirt. Um, and I picked it to wear today because uh, of the Firefly, um, because unfortunately um, we lost Ron Glass, who played Shepherd Book um, on Firefly. So he passed away, um, it was last week. Um, I think the day after Thanksgiving or some, somewhere around there and I forgot to look up the exact date but very recently um, and so I kind of picked it just to to kind of honor honor his memory um, I know that he ha had done a lot more than um, than Firefly but uh, but that's what I most know him for um, for the character of Shepherd Book and um, Shepherd Book is if you were a Firefly watcher um, he was kind of a, a mysterious character. There was there were lots of hints about um, that he was definitely more than just what he appeared. Um, a shepherd was basically kind of like a, a preacher. Um, it seemed like there there was definitely a lot more to him, um, but the show never got to really fully explore, um, and so it left a lot of questions. There was a comic book issue that um, came out that gave um, some of his backstory. Um, and I did read it when it came out and it, it did offer, you know, some answers, but I also felt like it wasn't, I don't, I don't know if maybe if it just wasn't the answers I was looking for, um, but it didn't feel completely satisfying. So Shepherd Book is, is just one of those characters that, um, that you never really fully felt um, that you you got to the complete story um, about him. So um, and then in the Serenity movie, the Serenity movie's been out for a while. So this is a spoiler if you haven't watched it. 
Um, so you might jump ahead a few seconds if you don't want to hear this. Um, but in the Serenity movie, Shepard Book does die. Um, so it's uh, maybe a time to, to go back and, and watch that movie and kind of mourn the, the character as well as the actor. Um, so anyway, that's unfortunate. 2016 really has been an awful year for taking um, a lot of, um, a lot of, I guess, famous people. Um, also lost Mrs. Brady um, recently. So lots and lots of people have, have left um, in this year. So don't know if, you know, magically 2017 comes up next month, if suddenly things will, will stop, um, stop having so many people die and so many horrible things happen. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, with, with the new year coming up, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, so that is today's shirt honoring um, the life and work of Ron Glass, also most known to me as Shepherd Book. Today's shawl is a brand new shawl right off the needles. I've been showing um, the work on this. This is Exploding Tardis. The designer is Lori Beardsley. Um, she designs under the name Lori B Designs, B-E-A. Uh, and I will link to all of this in the show notes. Um, so I started the Exploding Tardis, um, I guess it was sometime in the beginning of October because this is the shawl for the um, podcast Quarterly Knit Along. The Q4 Knit Along is um, uh, any shawl inspired by a fandom, so a Doctor Who fandom shawl. Um, so I started this um, a little bit after the quarter started and I finished it. Um, so the construction on this shawl is really fun. It is a, so it's hard to get all in one shot. Um, so it starts down here with bunches of stitches cast on. And this side is um, basically a feather and fan. And then in here you use short rows. So that way, um, you know, this edge is definitely a lot narrower. And then you're also able with the color changes to get kind of those, those jagged um, types of things. So um, it was a lot of fun. And Lori uses German short rows in the pattern, which I think are the best way to do short rows. If you've never tried German short rows, you should definitely do that. Um, I really enjoy doing them. They're really easy. Um, and I actually had not done German short rows before where um, after you, you turn, you go back and purl. Um, my German short row experience has always been you turn and go back and knit. So I actually got to learn just a, a little bit of a tweak on the, the German short row. Um, it's, it's really, really simple, but it was something, something new that I, I got to try. Um, and then I think I mentioned last time that I hadn't looked at the pattern closely enough and therefore did not have enough of the blue yarn. And fortunately, Lori um, in her pattern had an alternate color scheme where if you don't have enough of color one, which is what blue was, then you could do the alternate color scheme, which used up a lot more of color two. So for me, the yellow. And, um, and didn't have to worry about running out of yarn. So you'll notice that this is the top part of the shawl. Um, so that alternate color scheme really does add a lot of yellow. Um, so there's a lot of yellow up at the top. But the good news is I had plenty of yarn in both colors um, and I didn't have to worry at all about possibly running out of yarn. So the yarn is from Lazy Cat Yarns, um, which is a local dyer. Um, the dyer's name is Rebecca. This is her elemental uh, base and the two colors, the blue is police box and the yellow is zonkers. Um, it is a fluorescent yellow. Um, so I, I really, really like the elemental base. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn, but it's nice and round and it just felt really nice um, while I was knitting it. So I enjoyed working with the yarn. And I didn't bring it over here with me, but um, the bag I showed you on a, a previous podcast episode, um, the bag that I was using is out of, um, to carry the project around, was out of the Exploding Tardis fabric. And it was uh, sewn by Diana Couture, 
who is a local um, bag maker. And so, and Lori, the designer, is also local. So this is my local, local, local project that I used a local designer, local yarn, and put it in a local bag. Um, so, so it's kind of a, an extra special project in that regard. Um, I really enjoyed making it and enjoyed supporting my local fiber community. Um, and like I said, this is also the Q4 um, knit along shawl inspired by a fandom. So I finished that um, that shawl well before the quarter ended. If you want to participate, we still have a month to go in the quarter since it's December 1st. And by the way, Guinevere apparently really wants my attention. So if you see a little bit of cat, that's Guinevere. Um, uh, so if you want to join in on the knit along, there's still a month to go. That's plenty of time to knit a shawl, even if you start now, um, inspired by a fandom. And we are using a really broad definition of fandom. So if you think it's a fandom, then it definitely will count for the knit along. So I hope you'll join us. Um, and um, I really, really liked doing this shawl. So I am um, participating in the Indie Design Gift Along, which is, I think it's the fourth year for the Gift Along. It's actually the third year I've been participating. It's an event on Ravelry that um, has kind of two main goals. One, to promote independent designers, so designers who self-publish um, patterns, both knitting and crochet. Um, and two, since it's around um, holiday time, to help people, um, inspire people to do gift knitting. Um, so that way you, you have um, goals and other people that are also knitting. There are over 300 designers that are in the gift along and any pattern by any of those designers. So that means there are a bunch, a bunch of patterns that are eligible um, um, for this knit along. Uh, gift along, I guess I should call it. Um, and uh, so it's it's a lot of fun. The forums are super chatty. I mean, there are, I think, over 6,000 people in the group. I, I don't think there are 6,000 who actively participate. But, um, but, uh, but there, so there are a lot of people, a lot of chat. Um, I don't even try to keep up with all the chat. Usually, I, um, I, I watch to see if anyone is knitting anything of mine, and then I may I try to, to comment on that if, if I see it. Um, and then I also participate as a knitter, and so usually while I'm knitting something, um, the boards are broken down by category. So if you're knitting shawls, and there's a shawl group uh, or shawl um, thread. If you're knitting hats, there's a hat thread. Um, so usually whatever I'm knitting at the time, that's the group that I try to, to follow, even though I still don't read every single you know, post in that in that thread. Um, but it's a lot of fun. There are games that go on, um, kind of designer trivia um, and other types of things. Lots of prizes. There are um, prizes for free patterns from the designers. And then there are also physical prizes. Um, and it runs through the end of the year. So the gift along started November 22nd and it runs through December 31st. Uh, so if you are watching this, you know, at any point before December 31st, 2016, then I hope you will join in on the gift along. Um, and what's really fun is there's someone who compiles lots of stats. And so she looks at, you know, like how many countries are represented by participants, um, how many, um, how many of the design, you know, how many patterns from each designer, um, are, have, have finished objects. Um, and what's really nice is that she also keeps a list of these are the designers that currently do not have any finished objects that are um, that are, are have been have been posted. So that way, if you want to kind of make sure that every designer gets represented, then um, then you can kind of go through that list and pick um, pick a project to kind of help out help boost that designer a little bit. Um, and I will say, as of this moment, I am on that list because no one has a finished object that they've posted of my design, but I know a couple of people are knitting um, my designs. So um, so I, hopefully they will finish and, and I will have the representation, but definitely if you want to knit something of mine um, and, uh, and you haven't started it yet or you started it after uh, November 22nd, I hope you will join in the gift along. 
And I will link in the show notes um, to the, the Ravelry group. But if you search for Indie Design Gift Along, that is uh, the name of the group. So as far as what I'm personally designing, um, I got, <clears throat> I've shown you this shawl before, but um, I worked so, it took me such a long time to design it and work on it. I wanna show it off again. So the green shawl that ended up having a purple border, um, I got this pattern back from my tech editor um, with um, remarkably few corrections. I was very happy about that. Um, and uh, so I am ready to start looking for test knitters. In fact, today, while I am having this podcast episode upload, I will be creating the thread in my Ravelry group for a test knit for this shawl. Um, this is the Ravelry group for Karen Don Designs, not the podcast Ravelry group. There are two different groups. So if you are interested in being a test knitter um, for this shawl pattern, then make sure you go to the Karen Don Designs Ravelry group and check out that test knit thread, which I will also link in the show notes. Um, I usually give testers about four, about a month, about four weeks to test knit a pattern, but I think since it's the holiday time, plus this is a larger project, I'll probably go with six weeks instead of four weeks. Um, it uses a fingering weight yarn. You can do it all in one solid color if you want, um, or you can do the um, main body color and then a gradient, or you can do the main body color and you could have, what um, I used um, three different purples. You could have one solid um, color in this border section. Um, it's kind of, it's very, the pattern's very flexible as far as how you want to distribute the colors. Um, for test knitting, if you've never test knit before, basically the idea is to make sure that the pattern is knittable, that my instructions actually work and create the same shawl, um, obviously using different yarn. Um, and um, it gives a way also of adding projects to Ravelry before the, the pattern is released, um, especially if people are using different yarns. Um, so that way, um, when the pattern is released, um, people who are interested can kind of go on and already see some of the options. Um, and so you're mostly checking to make sure it is knittable. Um, and if there are any things that, um, that maybe aren't explained well enough, um, Hopefully, since it's already gone through the tech editor, there won't be any errors, but um, but you know, if you happen to find some, that's also the job of a test knitter. So you're just looking to make sure the instructions work and that you can create a shawl like mine. So if you are interested in doing that, um, then go over to the Karen Don Designs Ravelry group and look for that test knit thread. Um, and then the final thing that I'm working on, <clears throat> the big thing, the book project. I finished project number three. So there are nine projects in all. And don't worry, you have not missed anything. I'm still not sharing the theme. <laughs> um, but there are nine projects in all. So number three is now off the needles. And I have started number four. Um, and I have a, um, a page on my wall, which I can look over there and see it, that lists the, the patterns and then which yarn they're using. And then I have a checklist so I can say, okay, has the yarn been dyed? Because all of the patterns are using round table yarns. Um, has the yarn been dyed? Has the, the pattern draft been written? Has the sample been knit? Has the draft of the pattern been finalized? Because sometimes I make changes while I'm knitting the sample. Um, and then has the little intro blurb that discusses it been written. So um, I've gotten lots more checks on there. I'm really excited um, to see it filling up. Um, I did make, just this morning, I decided to shift some of the colors around. I hadn't finished dyeing all the yarn. And I looked at it and I realized that the color I had for the, the pattern I'm gonna use the Guinevere base on was um, Morgan Le Fay, which is my red color. And Guinevere in Morgan Le Fay is the yarn and pattern and color that showed up in my first book, Gawain Shield. And I realized that um, there's a reason that I picked it. It looks really nice on Guinevere and it looks really nice knit up, but I don't want to use the same exact yarn base and color as from the first book. So I decided to make some changes and I shifted um, the, the colors. So my goal is um, within the week to finish dyeing the rest of the yarn for the samples. 
um, and, uh, and to continue working on the samples. I will say I will give you a little bit of a sneak peek on project number four because I am learning a new technique that goes along with it um, and I wanted to mention the technique. So I'm not going to tell you anything about what this is or what it's going to become, but I am learning how to do an I-chord cast on. So there's the I-chord part of it and then here are my cast on stitches. Um, and this is a really neat technique. Um, I will definitely do a tutorial video um, between now and whenever the book releases um, for for this technique. But I, I, I've been having a lot of fun with this technique. I really love the way the I-cord edging looks. Um, so I like that. The one negative is that it takes a really long time to do this I-cord cast on. Um, I still have about 20 stitches left to go and I worked on it all last night during our TV viewing. Um, so about two hours worth of work. Um, I'm not telling you how many stitches. I'll just say it's, it's more, way more than a hundred. Um, so a lot of stitches to cast on, um, for this. But I'm really loving this, um, this cast on. And also, these needles that I'm using on this project are um, Diet Craft. These are uh, the Northern Lights, so it's the they're um, kind of lightweight metal needles. And this is the first time that I've used the I, I use Diet Craft Darn Pretties. They're they're wooden needles. Um, those are my go-to's. But this is the first time I've used the Northern Lights. Um, this is a really pretty robin's egg blue um, color. Uh, I had ordered just these single needle tips a while back, um, but it was a size that I hadn't needed yet, um, and so I hadn't been able to use it. So as soon as I realized, oh, this is the size needle I need, um, I grabbed those. And um, so far for the cast on, I like them. So we'll see as I continue knitting the project what I think of those needles. I mostly got the one set of tips to see if I wanted to buy um, a full set of those interchangeable needles. Um, because the nice thing is that um, the cords of my my um, darn pretties, the wooden ones, work with these northern lights, so I wouldn't need to get any new cords. Uh, I would just have some extra needle tips. So um, yeah, a couple of extra little things, um, and uh, that is what I am designing. So as far as what I'm dyeing, um, I am between shows right now. My next show is not until April, the DFW Fiber Fest. So I don't have to, um, you know, do a lot of work uh, in prep for, for a show, which is nice. Um, I mostly want to use the time to, I guess, um, dye ahead, especially with the self-striping yarn, so that I don't have, you know, that, that frenzy in the couple of weeks before, um, before a show. So that's kind of my goal. Um, but right now I do have a wholesale order that I am working on dying for um, and so that is kind of the the bulk of my my current progress. Um, the wholesale order is for Threads and You, E-W-E. Um, she is a vendor who actually travels throughout the United States and um, and so she she herself is from Texas and she likes to represent Texas dyers and bring them to other parts of the United States. So if you are someone watching the show and you're interested in round table yarns and you haven't been able to make it to, um, to where I've been, which is mostly in the Texas area, um, then check out Threads and You to see if she is traveling to a show that might be in your area. Um, this particular order she needs by January um, and I think one of the first shows she has in January is um, the Vogue Knitting Live New York. So if you happen to be going to that show, make sure you check out her booth. Um, and she will have Camelot and Merlin and a little bit of Tristan. Um, she didn't order any more Tristan, but I know that she has has a little left. So Camelot is the merino cashmere nylon, Merlin is the self-striping, and Tristan is the sport weight. Um, so I'm working on that order. I also, just before um, recording the podcast, I went to the post office to deliver the packages for the third shipment in the Poisoned Apple Yarn Club. So um, if you are in that yarn club, you will be getting your package very soon. I made a little bit of, um, of a mistake while I was packing up. So whenever I, I send out a yarn club package, um, 
the people get the yarn. The um, since there's a theme, a story, so the poisoned apple is a, a story within the Arthurian um, narrative, and so there's a postcard that has a picture of the that month's yarn and the story on the back, um, and so it's a part of the story, so it's to be continued, you know, each month of the the yarn club. Um, and then they get a little note that I add in, and then usually a little a little extra bonus gift. So I'm packing up all the packages, um, and you know, there's just this feeling in the back of my head that I just, there's something I'm forgetting. But I'm like, okay, I've got the yarn, I've got the little note, and I've got the the little gift. Pack, 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 and then suddenly it hit me: I don't have the postcard with the story, and that's you know, a big part of the yarn club shipment. Um, and I was like, oh no, what do I do? Because um, I had, act by packed, I mean, you know, it was already in the envelope with the uh, mailing label postage um, and it was sealed. And these are the types of envelopes that really are not able to be opened and then resealed without completely destroying them. And um, I had five packages left that I hadn't closed up. So those five packages, I put the postcards in. So those five people got the postcards. And I thought, oh gosh, what do I do? Um, so I decided that instead of trying to open packages and rip them and retape them and, um, and have to probably print off a bunch of new postage um, and, and use new, new envelopes, I just decided to put each postcard in a regular envelope, so like a greeting card envelope, um, and just mail those separately. So I sent an email out to um, to people who are part of the Yarn Club, um, but in case you didn't get that email and you are watching this, um, five people will have the postcard inside their package, and then everyone else, you will get a separate envelope that has the postcard with the story. Um, so if you get the envelope first, do not open it if you don't want to be spoiled about the um, the, the color um, of the the yarn club yarn. So yeah, that was super fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully it gets taken care of and everyone gets both parts. Um, but um, yeah, that's something I'm gonna have to, I think I need to have like a little check, an actual physical checklist that shows me exactly what I need to put in each package so I don't accidentally forget something like that next time. Um, speaking of next time, um, so next time um, the January shipment, which goes out January 2nd, um, will be the last shipment of the Poisoned Apple Yarn Club. Um, and then after that, I will be announcing the next yarn club, which is the Tristan and Isolde one. I think I mentioned that last time. I don't have the exact date yet for when I'm going to announce that or when that club will start. My goal is to open up the club um, mid-January, so around January 15th, have signups run for two weeks, and then, um, so that would be roughly into the, the 1st of February, um, and then they have the first shipment go out like mid-February, so February 15th, thereabout. That's my current goal, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, some of that is going to depend on how long it takes me to finish prepping um, for the club, um, figuring out all the, the details, like exactly how many months it's going to be. Um, I'm currently rereading the Tristan and his old story. Um, I didn't get as far into it as I'd hoped since we had um, had the um, the in-laws visiting, um, but uh, hopefully I will be able to finish that, finish writing out my retelling, split it up into parts, and see how many months long I want the club to be. Then I can start thinking about bases and colors um, and getting those um, details planned out. So that is what I'm working on with Roundtable Yarns. So obviously I spent time working on Exploding TARDIS um, and then I actually have um, a couple of finished items, things that I started and finished in the two weeks since the last podcast, so I will talk about those in a separate section. So the things that are currently on the needles that I'm knitting are the sample sock in the new self-striping colorway. I think I showed you guys last time I had like that much of it done. Now I have a lot more. So I'm not going to take it out of the needle holder and it's in the middle of a turn so it's a little funky right now. But um, there is the leg completely finished. I have turned the heel 
and I am currently decreasing the gusset stitches. I am about halfway through, um, through those decreases. So making good progress on that sample sock. This is the Exchange of Winnings colorway. And currently it is sold out. Um, when I listed the skeins in the online shop and then sent the announcement to the mailing list, um, two of the skeins sold out in like 30 minutes and then the other two sold out um, by the next day. Uh, so I will need to re-dye that and um, enlist it since it seemed to, to be a, a good color. I really like it. Um, and then the next big thing that I have currently on the needles, um, I showed you last time, is Hitchhiker. Um, again, since it is a fandom inspired, uh, I'm using it as part of the Q4 knit along for this podcast. And it is a Christmas gift, so I definitely need to finish it by um, by the end of the year, by Christmas preferably. So this is gonna kind of be my, my main focus. Um, so the yarn is Undead Yarn. Um, in the wild rumpus colorway i think i had only had like maybe up to here done on the last one so i have made more progress so get the needles kind of out of the way um so there we go a little more progress as each row um as you knit each row you do increases so each row gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger so it takes a little bit longer to do each row now um, but because it does take a little longer to do each row, it's now become really good reading knitting um, since I don't have to keep, um, when it's still, you know, short, shorter rows, I have to keep changing, um, turning the work uh, multiple times. Now the rows are long enough that you can really get a page read while you do a row. Um, I did, even though this is garter stitch with just some shaping on the sides, um, I did actually have a little bit of a mistake. Um, I brought it to Knit Night this past Monday and worked on it then because this is a gift from my mother-in-law so I couldn't work on it while she was here. Um, so I, I brought it to Knit Night so I could work on it. And um, one of the people at Knit Night was working on another pattern and she wasn't completely sure about the instruction behind um, this one stitch. And so I just thought, oh, I'll just do it on mine and, um, and try to figure it out, which worked. And we figured out exactly what the instructions were saying. But when I tried to unknit um, what I had done on this, apparently I dropped a stitch. Didn't realize it until I'd knit, you know, a couple more rows um, and then realized, oh gosh, you know, something happened here. Um, and I dropped the stitch and I tried to fix it. And I think it's because this is garter stitch. It is a little trickier to fix, fix a dropped stitch in garter stitch. Um, and I I had to kind of refix it a few times, you know, which direction am I um, pulling the, the loop. Um, and then in the end, I thought I had it and I started knitting some more. And then I looked at the back side of the work and there were two um, basically floats that were, were coming across and the front side just something looked wrong there. And I thought, you know what, I have been sitting here and kind of playing with drop, you know, having this drop stitch and pulling it back up and dropping it and pulling it back up. Obviously there's something that is just not working for me. So I actually tinked back. I didn't rip back. I tinked back about six rows until I got back to the point where the stitch was, was still good. Um, and then I've, I've worked, I think most of the way, yeah, looking at the yarn that I've wound back on. And um, maybe I'm a, a, maybe one more row and I will have worked back up to the point that I was before I um, had that drop stitch that I did not fix well. So, like I said, this is going to be kind of main focus between now and Christmas, since it is a gift. And um, I guess there are a couple of other um, gifts that I, I plan to, to knit. Um, so I need to, to also make sure I have time for those. They're smaller projects, so hopefully I will be able to finish them as well. Um, so I guess really gift knitting is what is going to be happening for me mostly this month. And, um, and maybe a little bit on the sock, um, but, uh, but that's pretty much what I will be knitting. So I mentioned that I have a couple of projects that I started and finished within the past two weeks um, since the last podcast episode. 
So my, um, I have, I have several nieces. Uh, my brother-in-law and his wife um, have three girls. The youngest one was just born um, um, a couple of months back, so she's she's itty bitty baby. But the other two, um, one of them is almost exactly Luke's age. She is about three weeks younger, and then the other one is a few years older. Um, my mother-in-law is getting them. I, I hope they're. I, I don't think they watch the podcast. Um, my mother-in-law is getting them um, American Girl dolls for Christmas, so the 18-inch dolls, and she is sewing them um, some clothes, and so I thought that it would be really nice to knit them some um, an outfit um, or, you know, something, uh, maybe not an entire outfit, but, you know, a dress and a cardigan is my plan. Um, whether or not the cardigan's going to go with the dress, we'll see kind of what yarn I have, um, if, it, if it matches. Um, but anyway, so a dress and a cardigan is my plan. And then I also thought I have another niece, my sister's little girl, um, who also really likes dolls and, and dress up. And I have, um, actually I knit her, I think two Christmases ago, I knit her and her older sister, um, who now no longer plays with dolls because she's almost 16. Um, I knit them some, some doll clothes a while back, but I thought it would be nice to also knit something for the, for the younger, um, the younger niece on my sister's side. So I have three, basically, girls that I'm knitting doll clothes for. One dress, one cardigan. That is the plan. So I have finished two dresses so far. Um, the pattern that I'm using is from a designer that is part of the Indie Design Gift Along. So I, I was able to do these as part of the, the Gift Along. Um, and she, this designer, which I should have looked up her name. I think it is either Georgia Nicholson or Georgina Nicholson. Um, I will put that in the show notes. Um, but she does designs for little kids. And then for several of those designs, she's also done a doll version, um, which is kind of nice. I'm, I'm not going to do the ones for the, the little kids. Um, but it, it would be nice if you do have a little girl and a doll and the little girl likes to dress up like her doll to be able to have um, a dress or a cardigan that both the little girl and the doll could, um, could dress alike. So I will show you the first dress. So um, this is the um, baby rainbow or dolly, sorry, do dolly rainbow since it's a doll pattern. Um, and you start by um, knitting these stitches in the round and then you um, bind off some stitches to create the, um, the armholes and then you knit in the round and have some increases. So it's a really, really easy um, to follow pattern um, and create something that I really liked. It is a DK weight yarn and when I was looking in my DK weight stash, I realized that um, I don't have that much that was really appropriate for doll clothes. A lot of it is um, hand dyed yarn that, um, and some of it is like, you know, a um, blend with silk or with other types of things that not quite um, wanting to use for uh, doll clothes. So this yarn is actually Madeline Tosh DK Twist. I had several of the mini skeins, so they were 50 yards, um, and I needed about somewhere between 120 and 150 for a dress, and so I, I thought that would be perfect. Uh, so basically I just started with the darker one, knit until I ran out of yarn, changed to this one, knit until I ran out of yarn, and changed to this one, but I really like the way that the, the color um, changes happened. I think, especially down here in the bottom, it really looks like it's, you know, this bottom trim. Um, so it, was, it worked out quite well. Um, and then there was a lace stitch pattern, and I haven't blocked this yet, so I'm sure that the lace will open up a little bit more. Um, so there was a lace stitch pattern option, so I chose to do that on this one. And then I still had a little bit of this purple yarn, and so I started the next doll dress, so doll dress number two, uh, same exact pattern. I started it with that purple yarn, and then I changed to this yarn, which may look like it's a white yarn, but it's really more than that. Um, this is a color changing yarn. It changes colors in the sun. And so if I let it sit out in the, the sunlight for a while, it actually becomes purple, which I thought was really appropriate to have the, the purple top. Um, so I did set it out in the sun 
for a while in the backyard um, for about five minutes or so. And, and you could see that it was definitely changing colors. But when I brought it inside the house, as soon as it was outside of the sun, it was really fast with how, how much it changed back. Um, so um, I guess it really needs to stay in the sun to be um, the, the purple color. And then there are a couple of places like right there where it seems like, um, and, then, and then a couple of places over here, um, where I guess the purple just is is there permanently. I don't know if something just happened. I, I have no idea how they, they make this yarn. Um, but you know, I think it, it looks kind of neat with, with little little bits of these purple flecks here and there. Um, so, so that was fun to get to use that yarn and I was able to use almost all of, of the, um, the color changing yarn up because uh, I only had a hundred yards of that. Um, so I was really happy to be able to use those yarns and have two of the three doll dresses um, that I wanted to knit for gifts. And as far as what I'm finished, since I already talked about Exploding TARDIS, which is my other big thing that I finished this week, that's what I've been finishing. I have a few things that I've added to my stash since the last podcast. Um, the day of the last podcast, um, my mail comes pretty late in the afternoon, three, four, sometimes even later. So the day of the last podcast episode, I got my next Fiber Club shipment from um, Elemental Fiber Works. And um, so I was really disappointed because I was like, oh, I just recorded the podcast and, and I, I don't get to show this off yet. Uh, but now I get to show it off. And this color was like made for me. Um, I'll show you the postcard that inspired the colorway. So these are all the NASA postcards. Um, and so she's taking the colors from the postcard as the inspiration. So that's the postcard. And here is the fiber. Blue is my favorite color. So this is definitely um, something that I'm really, really liking. And this fiber is a merino bamboo silk. So there's the elemental fiber works and then the fiber content. Um, so I think this is the fifth shipment. I believe that's right. Um, so this has been a fun club so far, um, getting lots of different types of fiber and then the, the colorway is inspired by those postcards. So I'm enjoying that. Um, still haven't spun any of it. Notice I've kind of skipped over the what I'm spinning. I have done a little bit of spinning, but not enough to really talk about the whole thing. Um, so I, I do, I am a little behind getting more fiber than I have been spinning. Need to work on catching up. So my next, what I'm stashing is also fiber. Um, also from a fiber club that I'm part of. Um, since it's white fiber, I, you know, I'm not really giving anything away by showing it to you. Um, so this is the Sheep Spot Fiber Club. Um, I chose to get the fiber undyed because this is a, an exploration of different breeds of wool. Um, there are options to get these dyed. Um, I just want to spin the breed and I don't, and sometimes the dyeing process can, can change um, the, the fiber just a little bit. And so I wanted to spin it um, undyed so I can get a real feel for the fiber. Um, so, so that's why mine is, is just white. Um, but this fiber, I was so excited when I saw what it is. It is South Down. Let me try to get this out of the, there we go, out of the sun glare. Um, so South Down, and then she includes a little bit about the South Down um, breed on the label. Um, but basically it is the, the Downs of Southeastern England, which is, so it's a Down breed. Um, and mostly these are sheep that are valued more for meat than for their fleece. Um, but, um, but there are a lot of, of spinners that are trying to, um, to kind of bring awareness for the down breeds and to make it so that their fleece um, is, is desirable. Um, and the reason I know all of this is because an upcoming issue of Ply Magazine is completely devoted to the down breeds. And I just, um, 
I've been I've been copy it since I'm the imply copy editor. I've been copy editing those articles for the down issue. Um, the down issue will be coming out for spring of 2017. Um, so so not too long for you guys to if you're subscribed to apply for you to wait. Um, but I've gotten to read all the articles, so I've gotten to learn all about the down breeds. Um, so I was super excited when when this showed up, and it is one of the down breeds. Um, because now I get to actually take some of that um, from what I've read from the ply articles and use it in um, in that spinning project. So that's super exciting. And then I have some yarn that I added to the stash. So the first one is some more mustache Star Wars self striping. So um, Stacy of Mustache Yarns, she opened up. Um, Instead of pre-orders, she just did already dyed. Um, so all of the Star Wars colors that she had done, plus this one, which is the brand new one, based on Rogue One. And um, when she did the update, um, I, I looked at all of the, the other Star Wars ones. There are several that I already have. I already have Boba Fett and Han Solo and Luke and Anakin. I think those are the ones I, I have. And I looked at the colors of the other ones and as much as I would love to get some of the names, I, I didn't love the colors quite as much. Um, I liked them, but I didn't love them. Um, so I decided, but I did love this one and seeing the sample knit up, love, love, love these. Um, so I just decided to get this one in the update and not any of the other um, colors that I, I didn't already have. Um, so I, um, so limited edition part four, Rogue One. Um, so I don't know if this is something she will be doing again, um, or if it was just a one time, um, special. So not sure about that, but I'm glad that, that I was able to, to get that. And then, um, part of the um, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday types of things. Um, I think I've mentioned before, oh, I know I have, Panorama Fiber Arts because I bought fiber from um, Heather, that's the name of the dyer. Um, I bought fiber from her at, um, at Kid and You and I showed you guys on the last podcast. So I follow her on Instagram and she posted a picture on Instagram of this one colorway and the way that she had the picture set up is she actually kind of had the, the yarn um, in the, the skein um, kind of draped out so you could see kind of the, the colors um, alongside a, I think a wound skein and I think maybe a little bit of a sample. I anyway, mean, it was a really nicely laid out picture. Um, and I saw that, you know, and she was saying that she had a, a sale going on um, for the, um, the Black Friday whole weekend thing. And there was just something about that picture. It just really made me want to go straight to her website and order that yarn. And so I did. <laughs> um, I went ahead and instead of resisting the urge, I gave into it. And this is one of her Christmas colorways. It is called Hermie Doesn't Like to Make Toys. I hope that you guys know the reference, um, the, the Rudolph cartoon. Um, so this is, these are colors that normally I'm more of the jewel tone colors. Um, and, and the red, I guess, is kind of leaning toward that. But, but these are almost kind of pastel-y types of colors. Um, and it's on a sparkle base, which I, I don't normally do sparkle, but it's that Lurex base. Actually, I did get yarn um, at, uh, at Kid and You on the Lurex base, and I showed you guys last time. So it's that Lurex base, um, and it just, this one really spoke to me. So these are not my normal um, colors that I pick up, but I really like it, and I'm looking forward to figuring out what I'm going to make with it. Um, so that is fun. I'm happy to add that to my stash. And then I was also thinking, so this is a little, um, little motivation maybe to participate in the quarter four knit along. I was also thinking I should get, um, some yarn as the, the giveaway, the prize for the Q4 knit along. Um, cause I was looking through my stash and I wanted to get something that was, was fandom based, either the, um, most likely the colorway name, um, was fandom based since it is a fandom based shawl for this, uh, for this quarter. And in looking through my own stash, anything that is fandom named 
isn't something that I want to give away. It's all stuff that I really like. Um, some of the past giveaways, I actually have used yarn for my stash. So I decided to get something that I really, um, that even though I liked, I, I would be able to, to give away. So I'm gonna show you the, the label first. This is Warp Speed. So I thought that worked for a fandom type of thing. This is on her Hitchhiker sock, which is 75% um, Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, so a good sock base. And here's the color. So this is kind of mostly, the, the main color is the blue, and then there are just kind of smaller sections of, um, of the other colors in there. So there's the whole thing and the label. So Panorama Fiber Arts Hitchhiker hitchhiker sock and I guess the hitchhiker could also um, go with with fandom um, so this is this skein I have to admit I really like it myself and part of me really wants to keep it but I had intentionally bought it as the prize for um, for the randomly selected finished object in the Q4 knit along so if you like this yarn and you would like to own it, make sure you are participating in the Q4 Knit Along and post a finished object before um, the end of the quarter. So basically midnight, December 31st. Um, and then one random person will be chosen to win this yarn. Um, if you can pry it out of my hands. I did kind of fall in love with it when it arrived. So it might be something that I have to pick up for myself from Heather um, a little bit later, but that will be the prize. I will give it away. Um, so hopefully that will be fun. Um, and a few more things that I've added to my stash. I definitely need to spin the fiber for sure, um, since I'm adding a lot more fiber to my stash than I am spinning lately. Um, so I better get busy with that. So I thought I was done recording, but then um, as I was getting the um the files uploaded this package arrived at my door and i just kind of want to geek out about it and share it um and this is something i've been wanting for a while and then it got it was put on sale um through think geek um, that website and i just decided to go ahead and get it because i was getting something else on think geek um this is the handbag of holding any gamers in the audience hopefully will enjoy that so there's a little tag that it comes with and this is a little bit bigger than a purse that I would probably carry every day um, but I think it, it would make a really nice bag the thing that I liked most about it in looking at the description was all of the um, kind of pockets and everything and it looks like yep lots of pockets and then pockets in the front here so these little little pockets there um, there's like this um, pouch thing in the back with a zippered pocket looks like everywhere I look <laughs> there are pockets and places to store things um, which is exactly what I love in a bag um, so I am super duper happy that this arrived totally geeking out over it making sure that the shoulder strap is there some people had reported that they're did not get a shoulder strap, but I did. Yay. Um, so really, really happy with my handbag of holding. I wanted to share that as part of, I guess, what I'm stashing. So I think I mentioned last time, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the podcast, but I know there was a discussion in the, the episode thread that I was having a hard time um, getting into another book that I'd been reading so many good books that um, that I was kind of dipping into a book here and a book there and I wasn't really getting into something um, that, um, that I was enjoying as much. And that is still the case. Um, part of that is because, because like I said, the, the in-laws were here and it's much easier to sit and knit because then I can still talk um, than to sit and read. Uh, so I didn't get very much reading done. Um, but I did decide that since I was having such a hard time kind of picking a book and getting into it, that I would pick an old favorite and read that, do a reread, um, and maybe that would that would help. And I realized that it had been a really long time since I've read A Wrinkle in Time, which is my absolute favorite book. And so I started reading it, and um, I'm probably about two thirds of the way through. I would have completely finished it if if um, if I had had more time to read. Um, but I'm about two thirds of the way through, and um, it's still it's still a such a good book. I really really love it. 
Um, and, uh, and so that, that's been, been good. Um, I've also been reading a book called Strangers in Their Own Land. Um, the sociologist basically decided she wanted to understand um, some of the, the she ca- calls it kind of crossing the empathy wall. So some of the, the motivations and reasons and feelings um, for people in particular, she was looking in Louisiana, um, who identify as part of the Tea Party. Um, and kind of understanding some of the things that she saw as, as contradictory. Um, and her book focuses on environmental concerns. So the, the idea that their community is a community that is heavily polluted um, through factories, the, the river um, in particular um, in the area is, has been extremely so polluted that um, it used to be a place where people could go swimming and, and, and whatnot. Um, and now um, no one can go swimming and, and it's advised that the fish that, um, that are caught in that river are not eaten. Um, that's how bad the pollution is. So although they live in an area that is heavily polluted um, and would benefit from, um, from the EPA and government regulations, they actually, many of the people in that community are against government regulations for environmental concerns and actually want to just completely dismantle the EPA. And so um, she was trying to figure out, you know, um, how, how can these two things, you know, exist at the same time? Um, and I am only, I'm still in the first part of the book, probably about a quarter of the way through, because um, again, just haven't been able to sit down and read it. Um, but I'm, I'm finding it, it really fascinating. And she also does a really good job of trying not to, um, not to look down on, on the people that she's studying, to really, really understand um, the best that, that she can, um, exactly where they are, um, where they're coming from. So, so that's, that's an interesting book. Um, and again, since I haven't had much time to read, that's pretty much what I've been reading. As far as watching, um, I did get to um, spend Friday, so the day after Thanksgiving. So we were up at the um, brother-in-law's house for Thanksgiving, and then the the in-laws, my parents-in-law, um, stayed up, up there. So Friday, we were at home. We had nothing to do. We do not do the going out shopping on Black Friday. Um, so we were just kind of taking it easy. And I spent pretty much the entire day watching the new Gilmore Girls. So Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life. Um, I am going to do my best to keep this as spoiler free as possible. But if you don't, if you ha- if you are a Gilmore Girls fan and you have not finished watching these new episodes, if you want to skip ahead just a little bit, you might. But I'm not going to give away any intentional real spoilers. But I will be talking about my feelings about it. Um, which I know sometimes could be somewhat spoilery. Um, so your decision, just a fair warning, no major spoilers, but if you don't want to hear about it, skip ahead just a little bit. Um, so I actually did not watch Gilmore Girls when it was originally aired. Um, it's something that I just picked up this year, actually, earlier this year, as I, um, was rescaining a bunch of yarn. I usually either listen to podcasts or watch things on Netflix. And so I was trying to find something on Netflix that I could watch. And I just thought, you know what? I never watched the Gilmore Girls. I'll give it a try. And I quickly made it through the seven seasons. And I think I was just at, toward the end. I was in like either I just finished watching all of it or I was watching the se- seventh season when I found out about the revival. So good timing for me for picking up the Gilmore Girls. I didn't have that long to wait um, for the revival. I know some people have been waiting a number of years, um, and but I was still, you know, eagerly anticipating it. So um, my husband took over, you know, Luke duties for that day, thankfully, and I was able to get to really sit down and watch. Um, and so, no spoilers, just feelings. For the most part, I enjoyed it. There were some things that were kind of weird. There were some things that I didn't really like that they did. Um, nothing, nothing super big, but a few, you know, minor things that I, I didn't love. Um, and I have to admit that, especially the first episode of the the four episode arc, um, 
it didn't really quite feel like the same um the same show. I mean, yes, it was great to be back in Stars Hollow. It was it was wonderful for all that. Um, but there, it just it felt a little bit different. It got better as the um, as the four episodes went on. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I was just needing to get back into it. Um, but um, so I think the the later parts were got a little bit better. Um, I so again. No, not saying what they are, but this is my my thoughts about it. The final four words, which I know were a huge deal, um, I will just say that I read online there were so many people that were completely shocked by those words. I wasn't shocked at all. I was actually kind of expecting them, um, so not really surprised. It seems trying to say this without spoiling anything. Um, it seems that 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 had to be the last four words that it it just had to be um it seems like that that just is the way it it should have ended um which is the way that the show um producer originally intended um so I'm not surprised kind of saw it coming. Um, and, but not saying that, that that's a bad thing. I mean, like I said, that's I, how I think it really should have gone. So I'm not surprised. Um, and, um, but, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I'm happy about it. Um, not, not a bad thing that I wasn't surprised. Um, so anyway, so I enjoyed watching those episodes and, um, yeah, I'm glad that, that I picked up the Gilmore Girls. Um, it's definitely a, a good show. Um, and definitely one where, you know, you, you get emotionally invested in the characters. So, um, so that was fun too. The other thing that I got to watch on Monday, um, my husband and I left Luke with the in-laws and he and I alone by ourselves went to go see a movie in the theater. I actually don't remember the last time that he and I did that. We usually um, don't go to movies together, just the two of us without Luke. The last few movies that we've gone to, Luke has come with us. So the Star Wars movie, um, Force Awakens, and then um, Finding Dory. Those are the two that, that we saw this year and Luke was there. So, you know, I'm not only watching the movie, but I'm also trying to make sure that, that my, um, my son is not, you know, jumping in a seat or making a lot of noise. And so I'm not really able to fully immerse in the movie. So it was definitely a, a good experience to be able to go to a movie and not have to worry about that. Um, so we saw the, um, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Um, and... I knew I, I know a lot of people have um, have said that they didn't really like the movie because it didn't feel like a Harry Potter movie, uh, and and that that's fine and that is in some ways true, um, but I was okay with that because I wasn't expecting this movie to be another Harry Potter movie. It is clearly a movie that is in the universe of Harry Potter, but it happens you know well before, um, so kind of in the the nineteen twenties um, era. And also it happens in, in America, in the United States. Um, and it's not about um, school kids, it's about adult wizards. So yes, there is definitely a very different feel to the movie. Um, so I think um, people who were disappointed, maybe they just wanted more Harry Potter. Um, and this is something that, that really is different. Um, but I, I really liked the movie a lot. I enjoyed it. Very glad that I went to go see it. Um, not entirely sure. I mean, yes, it's lead up. Um, the end of the movie kind of leads up to um, what will happen next. But I know they have five movies planned. Not sure entirely how all of those are going to happen. Um, thought that there were some really interesting things about maybe um, how things that happen in Harry Potter kind of how how they occur, how they lead up to that. Um, so uh, I think there's definitely some of that in there. Um, I really liked the, the characters. Um, it was fun to see um, adult wizards, magic users, people who aren't just learning about magic, you know, so what can a full, um, a fully trained wizard actually do? Um, I 
didn't really like the portrayal of the American Ministry of Magic. It's called something else, but basically it's the Ministry of Magic. Um, it, it, I don't know, it, it seemed to kind of stamp the fun out of magic. Um, so I don't know if that was a, I, I mean, I know it's not going to be exactly the same um, in, in every country, but um, but it definitely uh, was was not necessarily um, a, a good representation of maybe American life as far as, as magic is concerned. Um, but uh, but overall, it was it was a fun movie. I'm really glad that um, that my husband and I got to go see it, and that I didn't have to worry about Luke. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they continue that series. And I think, um, yeah, that's probably pretty much it for what I'm reading and watching. Again, we've got TV shows that we've been watching. A lot of them are starting to go on the fall hiatus. Um, so maybe we'll be able to use that time to, to catch up on, on some other things. Um, we'll see if there's anything on Netflix to catch up on. So if you have any recommendations for shows you think that I might like um, that are on Netflix, let me know. Um, and because uh, I think I, I need a couple of, of new shows to, to start watching. So I think that's about it. So that's it for the podcast today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you would like to discuss anything in the podcast, I have a discussion thread on the Ravelry group. So make sure you go over there. Um, also pop into the Q4 knit along so, or crochet along. Um, and uh, participate in that. So um, any fandom inspired shawl and then the winner um, randomly selected from the finished objects will get this skein of yarn from Panorama Fiber Arts. Um, so I hope you will join me there. Um, thank you very much for taking time to watch the show and hear me talk about yarn and knitting and other things. I really, really appreciate that you watch. Um, and I will see you in two weeks. Happy knitting.